Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another fertility TTC update and I'm excited. This is gonna be, okay, don't get too excited. It's not that kind of exciting video or else it would have a different description, but I do have a lot to catch you up on this time. So the last video we did on this subject was my fertility diet, what I eat in a day. I'll link that in the description down below. And prior to that, I think I had, oh, I did the video recommending different products that we were going to be trying going into the next six months. So if you haven't checked out either of those, I will link those down below so you can get a little bit caught up as to what we're doing differently these days. But other than that, I'll go ahead and jump right in. So April was our first full month trying all the new things, the fertility teas, fertility diet, um, all of that. And I actually felt really good that month. That was probably my healthiest month so far, just because May had my birthday, June we've done some camping trips and things like that. But April, we were still at home. I was working from home three days a week. And so I just feel like my diet was really solid that month. And I actually had ovulation spotting for the first time ever, which I thought was maybe a good sign from like eating really healthy, doing the fertility tea, um, maybe just that that was making my uterus really nice and soft and susceptible to a baby. But unfortunately, it did not happen the month of April. I was a little sad about that because I felt like this was my first month of really doing everything I possibly can. And that one was negative. So that was a bummer. But let's see, moving on to May. So I think I also mentioned in the last video that I was scheduling an appointment with my OBGYN for May. And it had only been eight months at that time, but I just wanted to check in with her and see if she had any ideas, see if we needed to make any different plans and just talk things through with her. So it is May 11th. I just finished my OBGYN appointment. I was gonna film um, before I went in, but I was on a mad dash from work because it was crazy today. But I just love my OBGYN. She is the best. I'm so grateful that I found her. Um, so I came in and I was like all prepared. I had like my little notes on my phone and my whole little speech that I was gonna give her. But she just came in and she was like, how are you doing? And we just like started talking so naturally and I was able to share everything with her. And um, immediately she was like, okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the full fertility workup. Um, you can come in tomorrow. We'll do it right away. Um, and I'm like a little bit emotional because I'm just so happy that she like, oh, they like genuinely care, which is like very different from the previous doctor that I had. Whew. Oh, I'm excited. We have like a game plan and we're starting tomorrow. So that's what I was praying for. I just said a prayer today that we would either like get advice or some sort of diagnosis or just a whole lot of peace because I was like, I just need something. So I'm just really grateful that I have a doctor who cares and we're on the right path. Because I had had such terrible experience with my endocrinologist, I think that is why I was a little stressed not even stressed about my OBGYN appointment. I was just a little worried that I would come in and they would be like unconcerned, like, girl, it's only been eight months, like relax, you're fine, it takes a while. You know, I was fully anticipating walking in and getting some variation of that. And I didn't. She was so great. Dr. Faircloth, if you are in the Utah area, she's amazing. So I came into her office and I even started by telling her like, well, last time I was in, this is what was going on. And she was like, yes, and X, Y, Z continue, which was like night and day different from my endocrinologist because I literally went into him for my six month post birth control follow up. And his first question to me was, are you still on birth control? Sir, we went over this six months ago. It's in your chart, but I digress. So my OBGYN, needless to say, I was like, so happy. I'm like, you read my chart. You remember, you actually know what's going on in my life. Like 
What an incredible concept for a doctor to know what's going on with their patient. And she was just incredible. So I talked through everything, all my thoughts. I was like, I'm kind of worried, like, could it be PCOS because I had all of these symptoms and like it took doing all of this to get my period back. Like, um, do you think that could have anything to do with it? And she's like, oh, like, definitely all valid concerns i totally understand well don't even worry we're gonna get you all taken care of and i'm gonna order a full fertility workup we'll have you come in bright and early tomorrow morning and do a full blood panel and um, we'll check that we'll have your husband get checked we'll schedule you an hsg and just lists off all these different things that we're gonna do immediately and she just like reiterated like don't worry it's gonna happen everything's gonna be fine and I think I have a clip of this, but I was like genuinely emotional after that doctor's appointment because I was like, oh my gosh, like she cares, like she listened, like she made me feel like my concerns were valid. And it was just like, I went home and wrote her like the nicest Google review of my life. So I did go in the next day. I had four vials of blood drawn. So they looked up a whole bunch of different things. I'll list them somewhere on here and all of them came back great so that was wonderful and jordan got checked everything is great with him and so then next up was my hsg but i went into the month kind of with no expectations because i knew i had friends flying in for my birthday week we were going to be going out for dinner with the girls i had been pretty nervous I, nervous isn't the right word. I had not been looking forward to my 30th birthday because I'm a big milestone person. I always said that by 25, I would be married, buying my first house and having my first baby. And when I was 25, I was actually Miss Idaho USA. None of those other things were happening. I was dating Jordan at the time, but we already knew he didn't want to get married till he had his master's and we had a few years ahead of us still. So when my 25th birthday hit, I was like, you know what? I'm 25, I'm not married, no kids, don't own a house. But I was like, by 30, if I am married with kids in a house by 30, then everything will be fine. Like I'll give myself the extra five year grace period and that'll be great. So it's always been in the back of my mind that I was going to have all those things by 30 and I am married, so that's great but I knew closing into my 30th birthday, not being pregnant yet, it was gonna be maybe a rough birthday for me. But luckily with my friends flying in and all the different things going on that weekend, I had people arriving like Thursday, Friday, some arrived Saturday, and um, just like full days of fun with my friends that I don't get to see very often from different parts of the country. And then Sunday, having a girls brunch all morning with all my friends from all different stages in my life. It almost felt like my bridal shower or my bachelorette when it's like you're introducing your, your friends to your other friends and everyone's um, like talking and having fun and it's just like all your favorite people in a room. That's really what my 30th birthday party felt like for me. And it was absolutely amazing. weekend it was also miss universe so we had like a big watch party and it was just the best so that was actually a really great weekend the only downside was i ovulated that weekend and jordan was gone out of town that was one of the reasons the big birthday party thing became a plan was because jordan was going to be away at a bachelor party over my 30th birthday weekend and so that's how the plan came to be so before he left, I think we tried to get a couple tries in, but it was similar to March. The timing just was not great. So I think he left early morning Thursday and I ovulated on Saturday night. And I don't know that for a fact because I took ovulation tests, I think 
Friday, no, I think the first day that I should have taken an ovulation test because usually start testing on day like 10 or 12. So the first day I should have checked for ovulation was on Friday. But in my mind, I was like, okay, like all my friends are here. My husband is not here. If I check for ovulation on Friday and it tells me like, ooh, peak fertility, all that's gonna do is tell me like, oh cool, I missed my window. And so I was like, it's fine, I'll just wait till day 14, because at that point I had never ovulated prior to day 14 in the few months that I'd been tracking. And so I was like, it's fine, my birthday is day 14, he gets back that day. So on Sunday, I'll take my ovulation test. Well, Saturday night, we're sitting around eating our crumble cookie and rewatching Miss Universe prelims, and I had the worst cramps. And I was like, it's happening, I'm ovulating right now. And, um, but then it was weird because I took an ovulation test Sunday morning and it said not ovulating. Not even like in the broad window. It was like a zero goose egg not ovulating. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe that was just like indigestion or something. I don't know. I'll keep testing. So then I tested on day like 16 and day 18 of that week. And both of those came back as not ovulating. So I think I must have ovulated super early in the month of May, like day 12, 13-ish. Um, so yeah, missed the ovulation window in May, which was a bummer. I was definitely sad about that one, but at the same time, I didn't have a lot of expectation for May. The thing I was really upset about was that my period came a full week early. Okay, so today is May 28th, so it's really strange. The last like day or two, I haven't told Jordan I was feeling like period crampy, but I'm still a week out from my period. And I try not to go too hard on these like early pregnancy symptoms because then you just get yourself all psyched out. But truly like, so today's Friday, my period's not supposed to come until next Wednesday. And even then it's pretty, that would be if it was like a 28 week cycle, which my cycles have been like 28, 32, 28, 32, like back and forth every other month since like they came back. And so this is supposed to be a 32 day cycle, which would mean my period actually isn't supposed to come for another week. But I just went to the bathroom and um, definitely had some spotting. But again, I mean, TMI, but you asked for this. It was like darker, like not red, like brown spotting. I'm trying to not get in my head about it, but technically that could be implantation bleeding because that comes like 12 or, or I think 10 to 14 days after conception and before your period. So... We'll see. It's either that or my body's being real rude and having my period come a full week early. But that seems crazy. I guess we'll see. Oh, of course, everyone says, you know, when you're not trying, when you're not stressed, whatever, that's what happens because I like thought I missed my window and whatever, like how awesome. And then like after a couple days of spotting, full on period comes. And I was like, oh. Never mind, my period just wanted to make an appearance a full week early. So that was annoying. I think that's about where we're at. Um, this is probably gonna be my last TTC video for a month or two because I've just decided we're just going to like enjoy the summer, obviously still continuing to track my ovulation and do the fertility diet, fertility teas, all those things we've been doing. Um, but our one year of trying to conceive is September. So we're just going to enjoy the summer. Right now we're still within that first year. And so try not to stress about it too much. Do the tracking, do what we need to do, and just go with that. Hopefully it happens this summer. If it doesn't happen this summer, then in September we've got a game plan set in place. There's a natural fertility doctor here in Utah that I would really wanna work with because he does a great job of getting to the root of the issue. And um, I think that's something that is really important for me because if you watch the whole series, 
in the first episode when my endocrinologist had me get on bromocryptine just to get my period back and not get it back naturally. I had some issues with that. So part of me wonders, like, do I need to go to a fertility doctor like this who is going to help my body fix itself without these additional drugs and things? And so, yeah, they also do a lot of acupuncture and different things like that, um, more like dieting, diet and supplement things as well. So again, just a very natural approach to fixing the body and getting it to do what it's supposed to do naturally. So that would be next step, but right now we're just going to enjoy summer. We're getting ready to go on a big vacation. We've got some camping trips coming up, some weddings on the books. And so I just feel like summer is going to fly by. So that is the update for our TTC journey. Um, I really appreciate, I've had a few of you guys reach out cause I haven't put out a video on this subject in a month or two, just being like, when are you gonna do more? And so I really appreciate that you guys are enjoying this. I, I enjoy sharing it. And so hopefully it has been helpful. I think I did a video sharing some of the different books, vitamins, supplements, things like that I'm using now as well that didn't make it into the last video. So I'll make sure to insert those here so you guys can check those out. Today, I wanted to give you a different update. Everyone recommended for me to read this book. It starts with the egg. So, I had tons and tons of people, the more I talked about our journey on Instagram, they told me I had to read this book. So, bought it on Amazon, read it, and I will say it is very informational. It's not necessarily a fun read. Like, if you're looking for a fun, like, pre-baby read, this ain't it. It is very scientific, um, which is fine, that stuff is important, but um, basically, chapter 12, it breaks down what to do for each type of person. So it has like, oh, you're just now starting your journey? Try these vitamins and things. You've been trying for a while and it hasn't worked? Try this sort of stuff. Um, if you have had miscarriages, try these things. And then if you're planning for IUI, IVF, try this list of things. So chapter 12 was very helpful, very straight to the point. Every chapter leading up to that was all about the in-depth findings of studies that inform those lists. So it's good that they want you to have the research to back up why you should try all these different things, um, but reading through a million clinical trials is just not necessarily my type of book. So um, I did learn some things, some of it I will be implementing, other things like don't touch receipt paper, I, I can't live my life like that. So. Some of those things are going out the window. Some of them I will keep. The things I am keeping from this book, I actually went through chapter 12 like I talked about and I ordered all of the vitamins and supplements that they recommended, which was like 90, $100 on Amazon, which was a lot more than I was wanting to spend. But you know what? Gotta do what you gotta do. So I figured I would show you exactly what I'm going to be using. So. I will say I've been taking prenatals for probably six months at this point. I have been taking the just like gummy prenatals, love them, have nothing against them. But when I was, I was low when I was needing to restock all these others, so I was gonna order prenatals as well. Well, then I found Pink Stork, which is a company that I love. I've talked about them before because they do the fertility tea that I take. They came out with a liquid prenatal vitamin and so you just put a tablespoon of this in like your juice or your tea in the morning and um, it has tons and tons of great stuff and it's all like a whole food blend. So it's very natural and um, I really appreciate that. So we're gonna be trying out the Liquid Prenatal by Pink Stork and it should last me a good long time because it's like a 16 ounce bottle. Another thing I've already been taking is vitamin D. Again, in gummies, I can't swallow pills. So um, vitamin D, this is something like in my early, early appointments with my endocrinologist, they found that I was very low in vitamin D. So I've been taking my vitamin D gummies for over a year now, and it's definitely helped because the last time I had my blood work done, my vitamin D was in a healthy range. So. Clearly it's doing something. Next we have vitamin C gummies. A lot of the supplements that this book recommends, it's all for the health of your eggs. And a lot of the health of your eggs comes from 
your immune system. So like vitamin C, of course, we all know, big immune, immune booster. So I'm also taking these vitamin C gummies. So along with vitamin C comes vitamin E. So I, there's actually not a lot on, that I found on Amazon that are just straight vitamin E. Usually it's just like thrown in with a general multivitamin, but I needed, I think it was like 200 milligrams to take per day. Um, and these are, I think exactly 200 or like 185 or something. So I got the vitamin E made with whole foods. So again, very clean and natural. So these, they don't come in chewables. Cause again, I did not have a lot of options with vitamin E, but these come in, I guess I could just show you like little capsules with powder in them. So what I've done is just like, you can open it up and put this in your smoothie in the powder form. And then I don't have to swallow any pills. So I've been happy with that one so far. Okay, so this is a very new one, um, Ubiquinol. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it's a form of CoQ10, and again, it's um, like an antioxidant. So this is another one highly recommended in the book. There's lots of studies on why you should be taking some sort of CoQ10 when you're trying to conceive. So I got this one. I'm not very pleased with this one because it, I thought I got all of these like gummies and powders. This one is a soft gel and it is ginormous in my opinion. So what I've been doing because it is like a liquid gel, I've just been throwing this in my smoothies as well and it seems to be working fine. I think this is the one I did find. It's, I think it's this one. Make sure you take it with solid food. <laughs> I did it that the first day, not even thinking about it, did not this morning, and I had some nausea or like upset stomach from that. So make sure you read all the instructions. And um, along with that, I also had to check into each one of these and make sure that they were safe to take with my bromocryptine that I'm still on that keeps my prolactin levels within healthy range. So um, yeah, I'm getting a lot more well-versed in medications and things like that learning lots about those everyone says eventually i will have to learn how to take pills i'm 30 years old and i have not had to yet so i'm just going to keep doing what works for me because it just gives me anxiety and i'm just not trying to make my life any more difficult if i have to take these every day i'm going to be much more apt to take them if i don't have to stress about swallowing eight giant pills so i'm just making it easy on myself so that is a little update. Um, I'm also in my ovulation window right now. So yesterday I took my first ovulation test. That was like day 12 um, and I was not ovulating yet. Tomorrow's day 14, so I'll be taking another one then. I've been meaning to record that for you, but honestly, cause you have to do it with your like morning urine cause it has to be sitting for at least like four to five hours. So usually I'm just like not thinking, let me go grab the camera. like because first thing in the morning, I go to the bathroom. So I will try to leave the camera in the bathroom tonight. So I will remember to record that in the morning um, and just kind of show you what that looks like. I'm still using the clear blue ovulation test sticks, which are a little expensive. So if this keeps going for too long, I may have to try out those cheaper Amazon ones. But for now, I'm st sticking with these ones because it just makes it very clear like no, yes, or peak, and that makes it super easy for me. So that'll be next up. I'm still feeling very positive and optimistic this month because of the HSG. Just, you know, blew all the cobwebs out of my system, I like to say. So I know everything is open. Um, Jordan's checked, he's fine. I've been checked, I'm fine. And so there's no reason why it shouldn't happen this month. And now I've got all my wonderful vitamins that I'm taking as well. I also did a blog post about all the TTC items that I'm using and loving on my blog. So I will link that down below as well. You can click through to my Amazon shop and shop those there. And yeah, I think that's the update. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. I'm curious if you're watching this, like, are we friends? Do we know each other? Are you also going through a TTC journey? I know me personally, depending on where I'm at in my cycle, I will just like 
go to YouTube and find TTC videos because it's just so nice feeling like, oh my gosh, yes, girl, I feel the same way. And um, it's just so nice having that kind of community. So I'd love to know what brings you to this video, if we know each other, if you just stumbled upon it, if you just stumbled upon it because you're in the same situation, I will be praying for you. I know this journey is not easy. I actually heard someone say in one of their videos, um, a version of this and it's if you're someone who is not going through a TTC or TTC journey or someone who has no trouble getting pregnant and you want to know what it feels like to be in a position like this the best way I've heard it described is it's like you get all your documents ready to go to like the DMV and so you like have all your stuff, it's in a folder, you came prepared, you come, you take your number, you go sit down, and you're like, you're doing your due diligence, you get there on time, whatever, and they're pulling everyone else but you. They're not going in order, they're taking the people behind you who didn't have an appointment, who didn't bring in their documentation, they're running out to the parking lot, pulling other people in that didn't even have an appointment scheduled today, and you're just sitting there being like, I did everything I was supposed to do. Like I brought my stuff, I showed up on time, I'm here, I'm ready. Like why are you, like how come everyone else gets to go back and I don't get to? And so it's kind of a weird comparison, the DMV and having baby, but it honestly, like when I heard it described like that, I was like, yes, exactly. Like it's not like you're not happy for that person that got pregnant right away or pregnant without trying. It's just like great for them, but I've been sitting here with my documents for nine months. Where's my baby? Like, where's mine? And um, so, yeah, I just thought that was like a really helpful analogy for anyone who is like struggling to understand what a TTC journey is like. That is what it's like. So um, again, thank you so much for joining me. My goal by the end of the year is to have 1000 subscribers on this channel. So I would love if you would like subscribe. It really helps get this video promoted to other people who need to see it and anyone else that's on a similar journey. So I hope to see you guys around next time. Make sure you're following me on social media so you can catch up with all the day-to-day -day things and I will see you guys next time. Bye.